Let's take a look at setting up FPP controllers in X lights and connecting them using multi-sync to play your light show. So to work with this, we have two controllers ready. The first one is a Raspberry Pi. The second one is a Culp K8 scroller. And so these are both fresh installs. On the Pi, you can see we have the FPP mode of player. And then the K8, we still have player. And so this is going to be a remote, so we need to change this over so it will receive multi-sync packets. When you do this, it will do a quick restart of the FPP daemon, and then you're ready to go. So let's pop into X lights, and we can go ahead and add these two controllers. So starting with our Pi, we can go ahead and name it. Under vendor, we're going to pick FPP. And then we can change the model to player only. In this case, it will then not take up any channels. I like to go ahead and set this ID as 99 and change it to X lights only. And then we can add the IP address. And of course, always make sure we save. Then we can add our second controller. This is going to be our K8 scroller. It's going to be under Culp Lights. And we have the K8B scroller. I'm going to leave Auto Layout, Auto Size, and X Lights Control checked. I will not use uh, Auto Upload Configuration because this means every time you make a change, it's going to load the controller automatically. I like to set my default port brightness to 20%. This means all my ports are going to go out at 20% brightness. Since this is an FPP controller, we want to set this to X lights only. Add our IP address. And then we can go ahead and save. So now we have the two controllers added. On the K8 scroller, we do have a few props. So we can use the visualize screen. And what I have here on port one is a spinner and a snowflake. And on port three, I have some candy canes and a star. So we can save that again. We can do upload outputs. We'll see in the bottom left, the upload is complete. So if we hop up over to that controller under channel outputs, you can now see that our four props are added there. So next, on our Pi player, we can go to Status Control Multisync, and we can click the checkbox to send multisync packets, and auto-refresh the multisync screen. I've noticed that on the current version of 7.2, it looks like this setting keeps spinning, so we don't get the additional settings when it's turned on. But if we refresh the page, it has saved and it'll come up. The default setting is to use multicast to send out these sync packets. Um, there's also option for broadcast, or the one I will recommend is unicast. This means that the player is sending the packets direct to each remote, as opposed to multicast where it's sending it out to all of them and expecting them to pick it up. Myself and others have had some issues with multicast, especially over Wi-Fi. So if you're using Wi-Fi or any other connection and you run into issues, Unicast seems to work better. When you check Unicast next to the controller, you do have to uncheck Multicast. And then when you add additional controllers later on, you will have to check that box for each one from your player. Once you've made the setting change, you can go ahead and restart FPPD. And now your controllers are set up for multi-sync. So let's pop back to X lights and we can import a quick sequence.
So now that we have our sequence rendered and saved, we can go to Tools, FPP Connect. And we will see our two controllers pop up. So you can see we have our player and our remote. We want to enable upload on these. Generally, your player is where your audio is going to go from. So this is where you upload your media. I do not upload my models since FPP can create them automatically. Since in our case, we are using only FPP based controllers with multi-sync, we have no need for UDP out. If you're sending E131 data or DDP data, you would need to enable this on your player. I also like to keep my pixel hat slash cape check. So if there's any small changes I've made without uploading outputs, it will be caught here. And then at the bottom, we want to pick our sequence. So we'll take our new one here and then we can upload to our controllers. After the upload's done, we can go back to our controllers. We'll look on our player, we have our sequence and our audio file. And then if we go to our remote, we also have our sequence, no audio file. So if we go back to the status page on each, back to our player, we can see our sequence selected and we can press play and it will start playing on our remote. We can check this by going to our remote and we will see the remote status with the elapsed and remaining and the sequence that's being played. We can also go on our player and go to status control multi-sync and you can see each of your controllers, what their current status is and the time elapsed to make sure that everything is being kept in sync.